Okay, it's right at 12 o'clock. I uh, always like to start on time and we'll finish. It's close to one o'clock. We want to be sensitive to everybody's time. We're very, very excited. We took a, a month hiatus because people, uh, summer vacations, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we are honored to have Bernadette Mako, the Senior Vice President of Cash Management and a Director at Provident Bank, and Greg Dietrich, Director of Government Banking, Small Businesses, and Escrow and Provident Bank. Welcome. How are you both? Doing great. great. Thanks Jim. for having us today, Jail. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Yeah, thanks for having us. For, uh, for those that may be new, what I typically will do is just give a little introduction into who the Rothman Institute is and set the stage, and then I'll turn it over to Greg, who will uh, turn it over to, uh, to Bernadette. So first, you know, who is the Rothman Institute? Our mission is to support, promote, and research entrepreneurship with a special focus on family and veteran businesses, and we do these kinds of programs. Uh, we are always grateful to our incredible, incredible sponsors, the TD Bank Charitable Foundation, Provident Bank, SunTrust, CIA, and J. Um, unfortunately, Tony Russo can't join us today, but he will, should be with us next week. Some of our programs, uh, obviously we're at Fairleigh Dickinson University, so student entrepreneurship has been a, a focus to really encourage young people to get into the entrepreneurship space, which is becoming more and more popular every, every year. Uh, our Family Business Alliance, we're looking to bring in family businesses to be part of this, where we provide information, we provide coaching and mentoring and other things for family businesses. Uh, we have our Family Business Awards we've had for 27 years. Our 28th year is going to be October 21st, and we will have a live discussion session at the end, and then uh, we are going to award the under 10 million and over 10 million family businesses, uh, New Jersey Family Businesses of the Year. So, uh, you'll get more information on that, and we hope you all can participate. Um, our Veterans Launching Ventures program, where we work with veteran, uh, veterans or fam immediate family members of veterans to help them develop business plans. It's an eight-week free program. Uh, we were talking earlier about some of the, the, the horrible things about the pandemic, but some of the, the positive uh, things that have come out. Um, because we are doing it Zoom, it has now been a national program. We have record enrollment. We have 10 different states represent. So it's become a national veterans program that we're very, very proud of. And we have a small business series where we have engaging speakers talking about small businesses and, and some of the opportunities for small businesses, even in this challenging time. So this is something you're going to hear more about. We came up with the term Family Business Week. And uh, um, many of you know American Express's uh, Shop Small. We said, that's wonderful. That's a fantastic program. It's done wonderful things for small businesses. We're saying that really 84% of the world's businesses are family businesses, about 50 per 49% in the United States. So the idea is in the fourth week of October, we're encouraging people to identify and support a family business of their choice. It could be a restaurant, could be a dry cleaner, could be any type. Because people don't realize that many of the businesses that, uh, that provide services, products and services are family owned businesses. And why is this particularly important now? It's important now because during this pandemic, when a family business is closed, that typically means that everybody in the family is not working. It's not about one person's working in government or somewhere and still getting a paycheck. So it's more important than ever that we support family business and our, our, our Family Business Week uh, uh, website is, is, um, um, is there. And we also have a shop family to encourage people to buy gift cards from restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a TV show called Family Business World, where uh, every week, every Thursday at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., where we interview different family businesses and people who provide advice to family businesses, again, to showcase family, family businesses. This is our Family Business Fridays, which we are going to continue throughout the, the rest of the year. Our Veterans Launching Ventures uh, program, Veteran Business World is the website there. And we have a YouTube channel, Maura Panuski and Sue Slavin in my office. Um, and I put together this YouTube channel with about 7,000 uh, 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 subscribers where it has a lot of our videos. This will be uh, found on that website. I've had an opportunity to be part of the New Jersey Restart and Recovery Advisory Council where we're advising the Economic Development Authority and the governor, governor on Main Street on, on what Main Street needs to do to help them through this crisis. And so, so real quickly, just to set the stage, um, these are, um, I, I always show this slide, um, Bernadette and Greg, because you know, we just thought nothing could get worse than the 2009, 2010 unemployment numbers where they reached 700,000 in one week. 
and you see where we are now, and that's really because small businesses are the employers. And so the unemployment claims have, you know, have, and these are actually old numbers, have gone to record, record numbers very quickly. And so it's important to understand that this landscape, small businesses, family businesses, really represent the majority of businesses. And so that's why we're having these discussions. And we encourage you to encourage other people to, to uh, join us for these calls again every Friday, 12 to 1. Uh, we want to inform and support businesses as much as possible when we bring these dynamic speakers. So I want to turn it over to Greg Dietrich, uh, the, again, the Director of Government Banking, Small Business, and Escrow and Provi and, uh, Provident Bank, and, and he'll introduce Bernadette Mako, uh, SVB Cash Management Director of Provident Bank. So welcome, and uh, Greg, take it over. I will uh, stop sharing, and um, um, you can talk to you. I, I'll, I'll make Bernadette... A, um, the host. Sounds great, Dale. Perfect. Great. Excellent. All right. Well, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to allow us to join you here today. It's, we're excited. The, uh, I thought I'd start off telling uh, you yeah, a little bit uh, uh, about the Provident Bank and then uh, a little bit about my role before I introduce Bernadette. Uh, you know, the Provident Bank started out as a small business. Uh, way back in 1839, the Provident wow. Bank was formed in Jersey City. And it was you know, formed by a group of small business people that just saw that they, there was a need for a community-oriented bank. And uh, you know, 181 years later, you know, we're uh, New Jersey's most experienced bank, as well as being the oldest. The, uh, 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 we're proud of our history, and we continue to grow. Uh, we recently merged with uh, SB1 Bank, uh, which provided uh, the Provident with a strong Sussex County presence. Uh, it also enhanced uh, our footprint in both Bergen and Essex counties. And then opened up a brand new uh, marketplace in New York with a branch in Astoria. Mm. And uh, you know, most importantly, we, we also benefited from a number of real really talented people joining the Provident family from SB1. So it's not only a, about, you know, what real estate you pick up, it's, it's the people. Uh, today, the bank's over 12 billion in assets and we have about a hundred branches. Uh, you know, as far as our, our business goes, uh, we're, you know, you know, very interested in lending, of course. Uh, we're actively lending in both consumer loans and mortgages. Uh, with a particular focus on commercial lending. Uh, our commercial lending unit has a great deal of capacity and uh, we have some specialty lending groups that you know, help supplement uh, uh, our efforts. Uh, we have a commercial real estate division that focuses uh, specifically on investment property lending. Uh, you know, for a small business, we're a... Uh, uh, we have an SBA lending area, and we have the preferred SBA lending status, Dale, mm -hmm. which, uh, uh, you know, the SBA has so much confidence in our bank that they let us make the lending decision rather than having to run it through the whole SBA channel. So to the client, it provides a, a you know, a much quicker experience, and it's, you know, more efficient as well. Mm -hmm. Is that an advantage of Provident Bank that not every bank has that? Absolutely. That you know, it's, it's something that's uh, uh, it's earned, not just granted. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we've had a long working relationship with SBA and it took time to, uh, to be empowered. So uh, Wonderful. Uh, something we're real proud of. And then uh, one other little lending division, which is uh, uh, we have a uh, healthcare lending division. And you know, obviously they, they focus on medical professionals, but they, they also uh, focus uh, uh, on uh, you know, businesses that help support uh, you know, your uh, um, uh, medical. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, surg uh, surgical centers or uh, uh, manufacturing of healthcare supplies. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, that's a little bit about the bank, and uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit about my role before I uh, turn things over to Bernadette here. Uh, 
you know, as mentioned, I'm the director of government banking, small business, and escrow. So long title mm -hmm. to keep me busy. Uh, uh, with the government banking element, uh, uh, personally, I've been handling the government relationships of this nature for over 30 years. And obviously, our company is far more experienced. Uh, uh, and it gives us the unique ability to really understand the challenges that face our communities. You know, uh, the world's changing swiftly, and you know, we help provide the the government entities with the tools they need to navigate these crazy times. Right? It's, uh, it's uh, been a, a new world for everybody. Uh, in regards to small business efforts, uh, uh, we address many critical business concerns. You know, it's uh, uh, payment and billing solutions, uh, payroll management and insurance. Uh, Insurance is a, a particularly weak spot with the small businesses and, and something that we'd like to talk with folks about because, uh, you know, what happens if a key person is compromised? You know, that you have a small family business and, uh, you know, a, a key person all of a sudden isn't, isn't there. You know, how do we prepare for that? And, you know, uh, you know, We've seen unforeseen business interruptions, you know, certainly with this virus situation. And, and you know, is there, you know, insurances that we can, you know, help us navigate through those times? Uh, and then obviously, you know, with lending, in addition to our loan division that I spoke about, we all also offer, you know, business credit cards and we have various small uh, business loan programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're currently working on a new small business loan program that's uh, in, you know, in development right now, which uh, we're hoping to have uh, in place by year end. So uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, we can talk a little bit more about that. Wonderful. But, uh, we, we definitely see that there's needs in the community. Excellent. And then, uh, you know, lastly, you know, uh, I also oversee our escrow program and what the escrow program is, is, uh, you know, we, we work with uh, attorneys and title companies to help them manage the funds involved in real estate transactions. Because it's, uh, you know, when you're doing a real estate transaction, it's a lot of money moving around. You know, you're, you're, you, know, you can have a commercial real estate for a $10 million transaction or your residential mortgage of $100,000. And we help facilitate the movements of those monies to make sure that they're going where they need to and, and providing them with the, uh, the records that they need to uh, uh, keep a, a good shop. Uh, additionally, you know, uh, uh, our escrow area you know, supports uh, landlords and property management companies in managing rent security accounts. You know, if uh, you have an apartment building that has 500 units, you know, there's 500 rent securities that need to be handled, and, and we provide automation to make that easy. Wonderful. Uh, and, uh, and we've found that, you know, there's lots of different ways that we've been able to use this technology for other things, everything from helping colleges like fairly managed scholarships uh, to uh, uh, prepaid funeral expenses. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, the product's only limited uh, uh, by by our, our imagination. All right, great, great. And then, uh, you know, the Providence, you know, very committed to technology. Uh, we continue to be forerunners in this industry and, and, you know, look to bring new products and services to our clients. And uh, I'd like to turn things over to my friend Bernadette Marco, and, and she's going to talk a little bit more about some of the new technology that we uh, uh, have in place today. Uh, Bernadette? Great. Thank, you. Well, th thank you. Thanks so much, Greg. And thank you, Dale and Sue and everyone at the Rothman Institute for inviting us to chat here with you today. I'm extraordinarily excited to be kicking off the, uh, the fall series. So thank you so much. Let me just pop over to my screen share here. And, you know, we just want to talk to you a little bit today about cash flow solutions. And Hi. Hello? Someone could, uh, yeah, if everyone could just pop onto mute for us, that'd be great. Thank you so much. 
Um, so I just wanted to chat a little bit today um, about, you know, cash management, or sometimes it's also known as treasury management solutions. And in particular, talk about a small business solution that's powered by auto books that we've partnered with recently. And just, you know, how it can help uh, small businesses even during this time of COVID. So before I get started, just a little bit about me. Um, I've been in banking for over 35 years and I've been in the cash management, treasury management space now for about 23 of those years. I am actually a proud FDU grad, Dale, so I um, really like that synergy there and interconnection. I was a non-traditional student from FDU. I went through the Metropolitan Campus and got my degree while I was working. And um, it was a great experience. FDU is a very valuable resource here in New Jersey and, and offers a number of different paths that I was able to take. So really appreciate that. I have um, been with Provident Bank now for 13 years and I've been in the role of Director of Cash Management and primarily responsible for the sales and service of treasury management products. And, um, you know, we uh, pretty much touch every business customer that we have. So we don't really segment out our business customers. We have, yes, some very large corporate customers and some middle market size customers, but, you know, our biggest audience is really the small business customers. So that's why we've been taking a look at all of the products Greg's been focusing in the small business area. We've been taking a look at all of our products and services and how we can better deliver them in a digital first environment to our small businesses. So it's really a great opportunity to talk to the folks on the phone. So I encourage everybody to, uh, you know, give us some questions if you have them as we're going along here. So first I thought it would be really relevant to just talk a little bit about what are cash management solutions? You know, I'll meet people and they'll say, what do you do? I said, well, I sell cash management, tre treasury management solutions, or I should say, I consult with customers about solutions that may make sense for their business, may bring efficiency, but they generally fit in a, a couple of categories here and they're probably pretty easy to define, but you know, information management is certainly one of them receivables products, collecting money. And that's really where we're going to focus on auto books today. I've, I think I mentioned to you in uh, one of our pre-interviews here that um, I've always kind of been a receivables person. I feel like everything in cash flow really starts with, I need to collect my money before I can manage it or pay it out or even protect it. I need to collect it. So I have a kind of a soft spot for receivable solutions. But we offer payable solutions too, and um, you know, solutions that provide liquidity management, as well as probably the one that's become more in the forefront than we'd seen in the past is really fraud protection, right? Fraud is everywhere and fraud doesn't discriminate. Um, you know, it doesn't simply look for the largest business customers. It's, it's pretty invasive now for small business customers too. And um, I can't encourage people enough. You, you need to protect your money. It's uh, hard earned money. So you need to protect that right out of the gate. Let's jump a little bit into small business. And, you know, I, I stuck this slide in here because I think it's important for small businesses to know that, you know, community banks, we don't really just talk the small business game. We live the small business game with you. And while, you know, we use big data and data analytics to understand all customers' behavioral activities, we do focus a lot on small businesses and ensuring that the products that we offer and deliver to market really meet a customer in their space. You know, I've prided myself as a consultant in cash management for all these years of not trying to sell customers or upsell customers on products that they don't need. I try to sit in their shoes. You know, I, I always consider myself on their side of the table. What are my pain points? You know, what, what are the hot button items for me? You know, what do I need to get the job done every day, get it done efficiently, get it done effectively and make money in the, in the, in the journey. So, you know, I've, um, I've been a huge proponent of looking at some of the treasury management products that we do offer and down marketing them to our small businesses, making them available. The reason I say that is, you know, when you look at my first slide here, I'll just pop back for a second, you know, um, some of these come at a cost, right? And some of these require some 
rather sophisticated technology or you know to some extent even a bigger bigger staff than maybe a smaller family run business right so so the objective i have always had is trying to find solutions that scale some of these functions down to the small business to the desktop and now even more prevalent right down to a mobile device right how can we deliver these products down to a mobile device so just popping back to small businesses i think you know there's some statistics here that make a lot of sense you know who defines small business i think everyone defines small business a little bit differently right. Some of the national banks define it a little differently, maybe than community banks define it. But I mean, you know, in general, small business would be considered a business with fewer than 500 employees. Maybe it's even fewer than five or 10 employees. But 91% of Americans actually shop at a small business at least once a week. And that's right in line with what you were saying about supporting small business. And American Express has been, um, you know, very prominent in supporting small business and um, you know the value that small businesses bring into our community are, are pretty telling as well. I mean for every dollar you spend at a small business statistically they'll say that 67% of that stays right there in your local business so it's even more of a motivation to help small businesses with funding solutions, as Greg had mentioned, but as well to, to, to bring them solutions that find efficiency. I like to call it running out of daylight, Dale. Every day I run out of daylight, so I have to make the most impact for the least amount of energy um, each and every day. So I think this is, a, this is a great slide. I like this slide a lot, and I borrowed it from our friends over at Auto Books today, too. So what are the challenges that small businesses face? And I mean, again, I try to sit in the seat of small businesses. I try to use the data that we see. I, as well as the, the folks over at Autobooks who've shared some of these slides, try to be very well versed in this, but I don't sit in a small business role and I don't sit at your desk if you're a small business or behind your counter. So asking customers is very important in this journey as well is, what do you need? You know, how can we help you? What are you using today? And I think some of the answers we've gotten is that things are becoming even more confusing than they used to be. You know, there are quite a few tools out there. And a lot of these tools, what they do is they segment a solution, right? They, they solve for a single problem rather than solving for multiple problems. And, um, you know, many of them are non-bank providers. And uh, prior to my, I should have mentioned this too, but prior to becoming a, a cash management um, officer, I was actually in the merchant business, right? The acceptance of, of credit cards. And, you know, one thing that I was always working to instill in my customers is protect your money, not just protect your money in your cash register or in your bank account or in your transactional business, but protect your money from who touches it along the way. Um, it's, it's, it's really very important to a small business lifestyle because a small business life cycle, I should say, because small businesses are moving all the time. You're an entrepreneur because you're really good at what you do. You're not an entrepreneur because you're good at accounting or paying bills necessarily or borrowing or doing your own taxes or any of these things. So choose partners and choose them wisely. And I think this has certainly been the solid footing that many banks have, um, have been on for years, right? The solid footing is that we are trusted business partners and well, we should be trusted business partners and align ourselves with companies that can bring you the technology you need to, to live a digital life, but at the same time, ensuring that you know, we understand our fiduciary responsibility there and making sure that we do the diligence on the vendors that, that we bring to market. So um, you know, there, there's a lot of choices here, as you can plainly see, and we, we try to be part of that life cycle with you. Bernadette, yeah, we have uh, we have a question, and then we'll okay, sure. So, one now does Provident does it provide a, a account accounts receivable financing or factoring services directly to the small businesses? So, while we um, while we don't have a true asset based lending, we do have some solutions mm -hmm. for businesses. And if someone would like to to chat and consult on an individual basis about what lending opportunities we have, we have a small business program. We also have a commercial lending in a CNI program, 
as Greg mentioned, we have some specialty disciplines there in healthcare, as well as the SBA. So, you know, every, every situation is unique, and I don't think that it's a one-size-fits-all. So while we, we are not a true asset-based or receivables lender, if the deal makes sense, we'll figure out a way to do it. I mean, that's why we're here in the community is to have those conversations. So thank you so much for the question. And again, Dale, if anybody would like to consult one-on-one, -on -one, they can just um, share some information or I can even share my information in the chat box so that they could reach out to myself or Greg. I should definitely suggest that Greg is a good resource here as well. Yeah. Yeah, if you can share that in the chat box, we want to make sure that people know how to contact you. Know, contact I will you. definitely share that in the chat box with you. Um, chat box disappeared while I'm in the presentation, so I'll do it when we get to the Q&A piece. Unless Greg wants to pop it in there for both of us, that'd be great too. Perfect. But yeah, I mean, so so before we keep going here, any other any other relevant questions from our um, from our participants today? Anything else that? Maybe I should stop and help you define. This is sort of a busy slide too. So if there's any questions that pop up about this slide and, and just the, the journey you might be in in your small business lifestyle, it sounds like the question we got, somebody might be in that journey, right? Where, um, where receivables might be outpacing um, inventory. You know, I think there's often an opportunity sometimes where your business model is actually growing and how many of those have we actually seen emerge during the time of COVID is, um, you know, sometimes your, your receivables are actually outpacing your ability to, to provide your product or to, you know, get your supplier to provide the products you need to supply further along in the food chain there. So well, great cash, question. Cash is, cash is king and, and, and queen. And so, you know, for the small businesses, that's been the, you know, I always ask folks, what's your biggest challenge? And it's cash. And so uh, what we're about to hear about is, you know, related, and that's why we wanted to do this session is to really help people understand how do they, what are some of the best tools available to do that? So, uh, so yeah, keep, keep going. We don't have any other questions related to that, but uh, yeah, keep on. So, so the one product I wanted to focus on today is a product that we have recently partnered with a, with a fintech company called AutoBooks. And a little backstory here, because I think this is really the important piece of the journey that we took as a bank is, as a treasury management person, I've been following AutoBooks for a couple of years, because in my mind, it filled the void of, how do I take some of those very sophisticated solutions and bring them down to my customer's desktop or mobile phone? Mm. How do I give them the ability with just their laptop or their mobile device to do everything they need to do to, again, in my opinion, get paid. Getting paid is, is the reason we work. Getting paid is the reason that entrepreneurs open the doors to business or, you know, uh, um, find solutions in the marketplace to say, here's something I do real well. I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to service it. I'm going to get paid for it. Um, so, so that's the solution problem here that I think um, small businesses have always had is, come on, banks, keep up with us. We trust you. We place our deposits with you. We like the integration. We like the, we like the collaboration that you provide us. But at times you don't deliver us the products directly through your own systems that, that we really need. And, and this is the void AutoBooks really filled. And, you know, what AutoBooks allows a customer to do is create an invoice, email it off to your customer and get paid, get paid faster. And the reason I use the get paid faster is because they give you all the solutions built right into the platform to allow your customer to pay based on the method that works best for them. Now, we'll talk a little bit about cash. So we'll keep cash to the side because you mentioned cash was king, but physical cash, and maybe now even more importantly, coins, <laughs> present a whole different dynamic to getting paid. But you know, the idea that you know, I, I, I like to use examples or I like to use real life solutions. Right. Um, a photographer, right? I'm a photographer, my business is, uh, setting up my sessions, taking my photos, producing quality work so that the recipients of the photos like the, like the end product and pay me for the end product. I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm not an accountant. So once I'm done today and I'd like to send my purchaser 
their photos, I'd also like to be able to invoice and pay them pretty quickly. By being able to use a product like AutoBooks to create that invoice, send it right to your customer as you're delivering the product to them, maybe at the same time that you've put the, the photos in the mail. I mean, these days, you know, maybe you can still deliver photos if you do that cautiously. I'd like to get paid and I'd like to give you options. And options include a credit card payment, right? Right embedded into the service. You don't need to, if you haven't engaged in a separate merchant company, you don't need to do that. It's built right into the service. Send an ACH transaction. If you're not using Venmo and those types of people to people type payments and you want more of a business solution payment, you can use an ACH, an electronics funds transfer, right inside this payment process. And if your customer still wants to pay you by check, they can do that and we can set up for you a lockbox to accept that all within the auto books payment process. Mm -hmm. And I, what I say, Dale, and what I can't express enough about auto books is, could I deliver all those products previously? Yeah, I could have, I could have let you get merchant services to do this. I could have helped you with the ACH. I could have figured out a way you could, could have done lockbox, but all of those are time consuming to set up and expensive and require management on your part because it's not fully integrated into this solution that you're walking around on your mobile device with. So they settle directly into your checking account. It takes out the Venmos, it takes out the worry of the middleman. It's all happening right between auto books and the bank. And, and again, it, it, it kind of lives in this digital space or, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to move to that slide yet. Moving around a little too quick. It moves into um, a digital space where there's no data that's needed. It lives right inside our online banking platform. So you're right where you need to be to do your banking transactions. So let's just say, make your own bill payment, transfer money to another account. You're right where you need to be collecting money from your, from your, um, from your customers. So it's, it's a product that's designed with small businesses in mind. It's a product that suggests to a small business, we've got you, you can do this, and we're gonna help you get paid as soon as you need to. Again, I, I can't keep going back to the idea of getting paid faster is, right. is what small business is all about, so. Absolutely, the, the, let me ask the, the, the question though, does this apply to all businesses? Are there some businesses it doesn't apply to, or, or who's, the, who's the target market for this? So, so the target market obviously would be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. small business owners. It would be not-for-profits. It could be service industry. Um, you know, and, and I say that landscapers, electricians, plumbers, you know, they're, they're out doing their business all day. They come home at the end of the day and they need to bill all of their customers. You know, theoretically, when we started talking a little bit about cash, and when I say cash, I mean physical cash, bills and coins. When you start to talk about cash, theoretically, you would begin to think, Dale, that mm, that might not be the greatest opportunity for a small business to engage auto books because there really isn't an invoicing process. You don't really give customers many options. You know, it's, it's, a, point of, it's a point of sale transaction. It's a point of contact transaction. I hand you something over the counter, I hand you my lunch, I hand you something over the counter, you take it and you pay me in the moment. Mm -hmm. But what I will tell you is AutoBooks had a tremendous boost in opportunity from COVID. Mm -hmm. Now you'd say, hmm, how can that be Bernadette? But if you think about some of our local businesses that are primarily driven off cash, right? So the luncheonette, um, maybe the bakery, maybe the, the pizzeria, the, the deli, some of those businesses that typically were cash-based businesses now needed to figure out a way to get you to pay them down without coming into their business because they're either going to drop it in your trunk or in your back seat. They're going to make arrangements to put it outside their business for you to pick up. They're going to safely hand it out the door to you. So the idea of transacting a payment um, became a little different. It had to become more of a, a contactless right. opportunity to pay you without seeing you. Right. 
So AutoBooks was able to quickly change the model for some of these small businesses and help them quickly create an invoice, send it right to your customer immediately and give them the option to pay you by credit card or again through ACH, which would come out of their checking account or even pay you with a, with a check if that was the method. And, and you'd realize your payment immediately before you hand it out the, uh, the product out the door or the service out the door. I mean, again, you can kind of mentally modify it a little bit for services, but um, you know, so auto books built kind of a business model around cash businesses when they couldn't physically accept cash. That was a great question, Dale. That was a great well, question. Well, that's, that's, that's wonderful to know because unfortunately, you know, it seems like this pandemic isn't going to go completely away anytime soon. And so some businesses have not, are still struggling with that, you know, with exactly what you're talking about. So that's, uh, uh, that's, that's fanta fantastic. And so, um, so, so the pandemic, how has that, you know, impacted, uh, you know, you know, you talked about that, but going forward, you know, what advice are you giving either Greg or Bernadette to these businesses as they, there's still an uncertain future, you know, and they're looking at the bank for, for guidance. What are some of the things that you are telling folks now? So I'll kind of grab that first and then I'll, I'll toss it back to you, Greg, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing I'm advising customers is think it differently, right? Think a little bit differently and think about what you really need in this, in this moment in time. But as well, think about a continuity plan. So uh, uh, again, I, I, like, I like examples. I'll give you another example. Examples being, and, and, and this is, you know, treasury management, cash management products, as, as well as auto books. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't decipher which methodology you're going to use is if you've used something now, if you've figured out a solution that's working for you now, but it has cost inherent to it, or, you know, that's maybe more cash management products. It has cost inherent to it, or it's, it's put another step in your process and cycle. Just think about the long-term efficiency from a business continuity perspective. Mm. So, I'm, so I'm kind of talking to customers and consulting with them about what is your business continuity plan? Mm. Hey, we, we had to modify our activities pretty quickly and be rather nimble, but what about the future? What if it happens again? Are you prepared again? Do you have the solutions? Maybe you considered some solutions and you didn't deploy them because things started opening up again. And I mean, you, you know, New Jersey, um, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, our, our, our area was hit hard, hit fast, hit a bit differently than some other areas of the United States. Um, you know, and you almost begin to think because of how we live closely in this area, how many people commute on mass transit in this area, um, you know, what could happen next? So I'm kind of positioning all of these products as what's your business continuity plan? Let me consult around your business continuity plan and figure out ways that should we all have to retreat to a work from home or some other disaster keeps us from being able to go back to business as usual. Are you prepared? Be prepared, right? Be prepared. So Greg, what are your thoughts there? Well, you know what, uh, Dale, Bernie, that, you know, one of the that, uh, you know, obviously this past year has been a learning experience for everybody. And uh, I think, you know, one of my big takeaways uh, from this is uh, uh, how important it is for folks to have a conversation with your banker, right? Because the uh, uh, talk to us about the problems that you're facing, because uh, uh, we have so many tools in the toolbox. And, uh, uh, and so we, we need to understand exactly what, what problem it is that you're facing. Is it, you know, are you having a problem in, in collecting bills? You know, you have cash flow problems. You know, the, uh, 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 when we were facing the pandemic, uh, uh, you know, we, we limited, uh, uh, branch visits and we're kind of focused uh, at handling transactions uh, uh, through our drive up and uh, an incredible uh, increase in mobile uh, and virtual transactions occurred over that time, right? But uh, what also greatly increased was 
uh, phone calls of people you know, coming to us looking for direction and help. So that uh, uh, we're consultants, right? We're, we're your financial doctor. Uh, uh, I need to know your symptoms and uh, perhaps we have the cure, right? And uh, uh, we've, we've helped so many of our customers, uh, you know, during the, uh, uh, you know, the, the early days of the COVID, you know, we, we processed, you know, thousands of loans through the, the PPP uh, process where we, you know, helped keep the small businesses, you know, alive. We got them over the hump. You know, and I'm proud of our bank for, uh, uh, you, know, you know, navigating through that. We, we uh, you know, did all of this virtually, you know, people working from homes and, uh, uh, and, and, and met the need. Uh, it involved literally everybody in the bank. Bernadette was, was working 24-7 and so, so was everybody in the bank to get this money out. So uh, quite simply talk to us uh, and we'll see how we can help. Well, one of the messages that, that you know, our Family Business Friday uh, Zoom at Noon program is all about relationships. And so many of these businesses, small and family businesses, really didn't have a relationship with their bankers. So they had trouble with the PPP. They've not had relationships with an attorney or an accountant, except in a transactional way. And so um, they don't know their assembly person. They don't know their congressperson. And so if, if people get nothing out of these calls, it's develop these relationships for your business survival. There's tremendous insight and tremendous, you know, Bernadette and, and Greg, as I said, they're consultants. They're consultants and, and they're not going to charge you per hour as some other folks do, but it's important for you to do that. And I've said that and still businesses are, are hesitant to, to do that. They said, well, I got to take care of my day to day. Well, that is part of your day to day having this, this information. That's such a great point, Dale. You know what? Uh, there's a, a lot of problems that could be avoided with a simple conversation. Yep. 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 A, a lot of problems and, and, and a lot of opportunity too, mm -hmm. that you find out that things are, are, are going on. So I, I hope folks um, will do that. Now we do have a question going back to your slide when you had the, the circle, um, that um, there, there was a question of why is FreshBooks under invoicing and not together in accounting with QuickBooks? Um, you know, kind of invoicing separated from, you know, accentuating in the previous slide. You, you want to say something about that? Um, I, I would just say that it probably could have fit in a number of different categories. And, and the reason I'll say that is I'll even go back to my own slide and you'll see that there are some products that map over Right, so I have control of person and payables and fraud. I have ACH origination and payables and receivables. I'll only suggest that its primary function was work I dropped into the slide here, and that that didn't suggest that that was exclusively the functionality for it. Wonderful. Wonderful. The, Is that a good answer? That's a good answer. Good, 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 good answer. The, uh, good. A plus. <laughs> a, a plus with the. So, but, it, so, but it's true about a lot of these functionalities, right? Because it, it doesn't matter who you're looking at here. I mean, think about paychecks and ADP. We've had relationships with payroll companies as treasury management folks for years. You know, they're, they're always looking for a new business solution to deploy too, because they need to be well prepared and scalable for things that happen, even as large companies. So, um, yeah, I think, I think when you look at everybody on this list here, every, everybody's trying to figure out how many different scalable solutions can they deploy? Should one not work for anybody else? So yeah, it's the largest, largest wallet share we can all grab. Well, well as you know, in, in the business world, pain, people use other terms, rolls downhill. Pain rolls downhill. So, so what happens with a lot of the small businesses is that the big businesses are having trouble. So their payment terms are, you know, are extended. And so people are stuck you know, with, and, and, and frankly, it's, it's, to me, it's really unconscionable to expect that a small family business, you know, is, is holding, you know, you know, holding that, you know, that receivable for so long. I mean, what advice do you give to them? I mean, did they, they can't really play hardball because they'll say, we'll just use the next, you know, small business. What, what, what do you say? And a lot of our clients are dealing with that. What, what, especially now, what, 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 what guidance do you have or advice do you give folks? So, you know, that is actually a great question that AutoBooks answers. Um, because 
you know, what it does is it gives the customer options for payment, right? So, so if you don't have ready cash that you want to purchase something, it gives you an, it gives you an in-application option, pay me by credit card, right? That'll give you time to figure out your cash flow. Um, I, I think that's, that's the perfect solution to um, a small business is you need to be prepared with options, right? Everybody's not going to have ready cash to pay you. But if you have the option for alternative payment methods, you kind of open up your customer base. Um, you know, it, sometimes if you're a, if you're a small business or you're you know you're a you're a Main Street type business, you know, having merchant services and 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 all of these different kind of applications available, it's too hard for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and it it kind of led right into this slide too, Dale, is that. It's such an easy application and I see who's paid here. So it's not just, hey, I'm gonna invoice and get paid, but AutoBooks really delivers an accounting solution embedded. And, and I keep saying this because this is really important. You can't buy AutoBooks, you can't call AutoBooks and buy it. You can only buy it through your financial institution mm -hmm. because it's embedded in your online banking. That, that, um, that connectivity that you have in that integration is key to the cash flow because at any given moment you can see who's paid me and who hasn't, right? You don't have to flip through, you know, your own computer or flip through your, your files. And while it can be your accounting system, it can also integrate very well with other accounting systems. So if you're already working with QuickBooks and you want to integrate the piece that, that AutoBooks has, you can do that. But what I will say is all of this comes at a single price. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I'm talking about a, a price for delivery of under $10, cool. right? So we will deliver this solution for you under $10, and then you'll pay very fair and competitive transaction costs for whatever method your customer chooses to pay. And a, a bit unlike um, traditional merchant services where if the card wasn't present, you know, the business owner might get hit with a little bit more interchange fees. All of that is, all of that is normalized in this situation because it's a, it's, a, it's a digital first application that normalizes cost. So one cost isn't higher than another should a customer choose one over the other. You want to be able to give them all of the options. You don't want to scale back the options and say, yeah, I'm not doing that piece because it's a little more expensive. I don't take, we, we've all heard that. How many times have you pulled out a certain credit card in a certain merchant and they said, yeah, that one's a little too expensive for me. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's those delivery channels that broaden the opportunities that make it more accessible. Absolutely make it more accessible. Well, and again, and one of the, one of the things we're trying to bring are, are and working with, um, you know, a number of, of, uh, of, the, of the folks we work with like you is, is, you know, people are short, more short staff now than ever before. Mm -hmm. And so to simplify solutions so that, you know, you don't have to rely on um, that, that, that you don't have to be a sophisticated, you know, CPA to deal with some of these financial issues and, and, uh, and to, move, to move forward. So, so we, we talked, Greg, you had mentioned early on about that kind of key employee insurance. You said about insurance and, and some other things. So as we're looking at cash flows and other things, what are you seeing out there as you talk to people about things like, um, you know, those types of ways to protect the business, you know, in a time with, the, with, with key employees who, you know, who, who could have something happen to them? Oh, you know what, it, it's, it's something that, uh... Uh, you know, at the bank, we're, we're uh, working on having more communication with our clients on the subject because it's, uh, unfortunately, uh, they realize that they need insurance when the situation comes up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to, that, uh, you know, when, when life is good and, and everything's fine, you know, you know do you want to do you want to write that check for that insurance payment? Right, and uh, uh, and then all of a sudden the event happens, and then you you see the fallout, and 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 generally you know once an event like that happens, um, it's a lot harder to work through. Mm -hmm. So that uh, you know it's uh, preventative maintenance. It's changing the oil on your car. You know it's uh, uh, you know it's something that you kind of need to do. And, and I think 
that when people are starting a, a new business or, or just evaluating their business, uh, they need to, 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 to realize, you know, what if I, I'm a plumber? What, what happens if something happens to me? You know, how is my family going to, you know, carry on? You know, uh, you know, how will my business survive? So that, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not fun things to think about. And, and they're not fun conversations for us to have with the client, but it's ones that we have to have and it's you know, things we have to accept that, uh, you know, things happen. And, and, I, and I can speak firsthand. We, we, and I thank, I thank folks for coming, even though we're a week behind. We delayed it because my dad, my dad passed away. And, and uh, fortunately, my dad was, was forward thinking when he came to this to talk about you know, everything from memorials and other things and so on. And, and he made this transition so much easier by preparing. And so I really see the value of, you know, of as painful as it is losing my dad, I'm just, I'm forever grateful to him for, for making this transition easy though. You know, it, it wasn't difficult necessarily for him, but a lot of people it's difficult to have that conversation. What if the key employee in the family business is, is 90 years old? You know, what, uh, what, you know what, what goes on? And I know businesses where the person's 90 years old and, and they really think they're gonna they're gonna live for another thirty years, um, and so that's that's why it's important. And then you know, looking at cash flow and and um, and other things that ties into that. This is a new world. This is a new world, and and innovation is 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 the key. And and I'm seeing more like the people who attend these calls are people that are open to learning and innovative. But a lot of people don't attend these calls, and and unless you have something really 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 busy to do. It's important to come and hear as much information as possible so that you can make informed decisions on where you take your, your business. And so, uh, so it's, been, it's just been, been great. Um, so Bernadette, what else are you seeing at the bank you know, from, from your senior level working with, with this, this community? Well, I just want to run through this slide because I, I think this, um, this quickly talks about just, just the value auto books can bring to you with sending invoices and accepting payments. And, um, you know, quite frankly, from your mobile phone, in less than five minutes, you can be enrolled. You can be right out there sending out what are honestly very nice professional invoices. You don't have to do much work to get your invoice out the door and be paid Overnight, I mean, we've had some of our early adopters here have been sending invoices and getting payments in 24 hours. I mean, they were 24 hours from demonstration, right? Because we'll do a demo for you. We'll do a 15 minute or 30 minute demo just so you get to see exactly what the benefits for your business would be. They went right from demo, log in, enroll, and 24 hours later, they were sending invoices and getting paid. So startup yeah. here is quick. Startup here is easy. And um you know, my advice to small businesses, you got to figure out how to get paid and get paid sooner. Um, you know, something to think about, too, uh, is the uh, with the upcoming election is, uh, uh, you know, there's going to, you know, there's been the talk about a, a big influx of the mail in uh, vote voting and the impacts to mail delivery. So uh, uh, going through traditional mail. Uh, you know, will invoices, how timely will they be, you know, getting to their clients and, and in turn, how quickly is payment coming back? So like automated channels like, like auto books and, and other things that we offer uh, will circumvent that. And so we, we had a wonderful session on cybersecurity and, and uh, um, you know, on, on really how to protect and, and to be wary. Now, is this is this something that can be helpful too? As we're dealing with this new world of of, of cyber crime and, and and other things. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think I had mentioned earlier in the presentation how um, how important fraud prevention is, and and I can't say again enough. Besides continuity of your business, small business owner, you earn that money. You do everything you can to protect it. Um, it's, it's because fraud does not, um, it does not discriminate, right? Uh, you know, I think a lot of people think law, fraud is at big corporate or fraud is at financial institutions or fraudsters are looking for each and every one of us and fraudsters are looking at small businesses as well, you know, and can, uh, 
and get in there and, 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 and take what you've worked so hard for. So yeah, I mean, if, if there's one takeaway other than get paid faster, it's protect, do what you need to do to protect yourself. Do what you need to do, lock your personal credit. I mean, you know, when you're a small business owner, not only are the expectations that you live your, your small business financial life, the way you live your consumer financial life, protect both spaces, right? Because you are your business. So do what you can to lock your credit, Make sure you're checking your account statements, your um, credit card statements, your checking account statements. Um, you know, make sure that, that, that you know who you're paying money to and that they're the only people taking money from you. And I can't honestly say it any simpler than that, Dale. I, I honestly, I can't. Um, well, that's, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, I, and I'd be remiss, I mean, we're getting near the end of, of time. This always goes so quick is so you've had a number of, of your customers with PPP loans and some of the other, what advice do you have? I mean, this is, you know, you know, weeks and months after people have either received or gotten that. What, what are you seeing with that, with, with small businesses that have actually accessed that capital? Do you have any advice? Do they need to come back and just talk to their banker after that? Or what, what, what are you telling them to do? Well, you know, there's certainly, you know, ongoing dialogue and, uh, uh, and the, the, that we're, you know, also initiating with our clients, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, again, it's, uh, it's communication and, you know, we continue to share guidance, you know, like from, from the SBA and, and governing bodies to, uh, you know, just to, uh, make sure that, uh, things are, uh, accomplishing, uh, the, the intent. Mm -hmm. I'll just add, Dale, that right now, of course, um, anyone who was able to acquire a PPP loan, now the forgiveness program is going to begin starting. And, you know, there's still some conversation. Contact your legislators. You can find them. You know, maybe we can, you know, maybe even the Rothman can help to you find your legislators. Let them know that, you know, there is, um, there is a movement in community banks to have loans under $150,000 forgiven with just a certification. But if not, get your ducks in a row, prepare what you need, right? Get your, get your tax forms, get all of your bills prepared. Because, you know, the greatest part about this loan is it's going to be forgiven, right? The government was able to provide you funding to potentially stay afloat, how many family businesses survived through this, right? I, I go back to family businesses. My, my neighbors right behind me, they run a family business. The, you know, the siblings are involved, their children are now involved and it, you know, those kinds of loans were able to keep families afloat. And now the beauty of it is if, if you qualify, if you used it for the purpose intended, you may not need to pay it back. So I, I would encourage everyone who has received a PPP loan to carefully look at the forgiveness programs. If you took less than $150,000, which almost all of our borrowers did, please go, go reach out to your legislator and say, help us here. Don't make the red tape keep us from getting our forgiveness. So yeah, that, that'll be my message to small businesses is be a proponent of that loan forgiveness. And if you do have to go through the certification process, Make it easier on yourself. Start getting all of your documentation in place today. Well, great information at sba.gov too, right? I, I can say come to Providence site, but great information at, at the sba.gov too. Yeah, and, and Al Tatone, you know, who, who runs the SBA for New Jersey has been on a couple times for, for us. He was our last guest and, and um, um, but just very, very good. But we, we've got to be in the small business and family business community. We've got to be a lot more aggressive. Um, I used to be a state, you know, I used to be deputy, deputy commissioner in New Jersey Department of Community Affairs, so I know the state. And they're good people in the state. They're good Democrats. They're good Republicans. The trouble is they're busy, and they respond to the loudest voices out there. We'd like to say that people, you know, sit in a room and make decisions based on legislation. No, they have to respond to the loudest voices out there. And big business has money to pay loud voices. Unions have money to pay loud voices. Small business, you know, we're so busy working every day. We're focused on our business. We don't have extra money for lobbyists. So you have to now, and frankly, shame on any of you if you've not, if you don't know your legislator and you've not reached out to them, um, because I think Bernadette's point is a, is a great one. Here's an opportunity. And, and, and it's not always just about you. So maybe you didn't take the PPP. You should still call on behalf of small businesses to say, 
here's an opportunity because I, I really believe that if, if the legislators, the Congress folks really hear from enough people, they will forgive that. Mm -hmm. They will forgive that. But if you sit and just say, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote, you know, my only responsibility is to vote and then be quiet. Well, you're not gonna get anything. And so that's why we, we do these things because we believe in small business. As I say all the time, small business is America. This is the America. And, and so, so it's really important for you to do that. And, and you're not too busy to do that because uh, it's like the people who don't vote and then complain about government. You know, it's like, you know, we can't do that anymore. We really are in the midst of a crisis. So, um, so sorry to go on about that. Uh, we're near yeah, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease there. It, it really does. It really does. So, so with that, I want to thank everybody who attended. Bernadette, Greg, great information. I, I, I'm sure people will take advantage of this. Um, we try to keep, uh, keep on time and it looks like uh, it's one o'clock. So, uh, so thank you all. Thank everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. You too. Thanks Gail. to you too, Gail. Thanks so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend. It. Yeah. Thanks, folks. Enjoy.